Welcome to the DEF CAM. The recent achievement of the Turkish Kizilelma unmanned combat aircraft has created a serious moment of reflection within Pakistan's defense community because it demonstrates the point where unmanned aviation begins to overlap with the domain that was once exclusive to manned fighter aircraft. The successful launch of the Gokdogan Beyond Visual Range missile from a fully indigenous platform guided entirely by its own advanced electronically scanned radar shows that unmanned systems are no longer limited to surveillance, basic strike missions, or controlled engagements. They are beginning to take on roles that demand rapid processing, complex sensor fusion, and high confidence in autonomous decision-making. For Pakistan, this development is more than an international milestone. It mirrors a path that Pakistan itself is working toward, where the integration of locally developed long-range air-to-air weapons with unmanned platforms becomes a defining feature of the future force structure. Pakistan views the evolution of the Kizilelma not as an isolated achievement of a partner nation, but as a technological signal that the gap between fighters and unmanned systems is narrowing at a pace faster than many predicted. The fact that an unmanned aircraft has demonstrated stable flight under the stresses of missile launch and has processed air target data through an indigenous radar suite provides a preview of what Pakistan may pursue for its own air combat evolution. The focus shifts away from quantity and raw presence toward the quality of sensors, the precision of algorithms, and the depth of data that a platform can process in real time. When an unmanned aircraft can identify, track, and prosecute a distant airborne threat using its own radar and guidance systems, it opens an entirely new chapter in deterrence and operational creativity. For Pakistan, the possibility of adapting a similar platform to integrate the indigenous FAS missile family is not merely an idea. It represents a logical continuation of Pakistan's long-standing objective to create a fully independent air combat ecosystem. The FAS series, designed for long-range air-to-air engagements, requires a radar system capable of generating high-fidelity target tracks at significant distances. This requires a radar that has strong resistance to electronic interference, a high refresh rate, and the ability to generate narrow, precise beams for long-range target illumination. The Kizilelma demonstration shows that an unmanned platform can meet these requirements if its sensors and fire control systems are integrated at a deep level, rather than through superficial bolt-on improvements. Pakistan understands that any system chosen for the firing of FAS missiles must be capable of operating in contested environments where the enemy will attempt to disrupt tracking, jam data links, and saturate airspace with decoys. This requires an unmanned aircraft that is not reliant on external guidance during crucial moments of missile employment. The Turkish demonstration proves that onboard autonomy can take over where external control becomes unreliable. The radar of the aircraft provided sufficient information for the Gokdogan missile to acquire, maintain, and guide itself to its designated target without depending on a remote pilot struggling to overcome jamming or signal interruptions. For Pakistan, this presents a future where a formation of unmanned aircraft provides forward detection, long-range engagement, and vast coverage without risking human pilots in the most exposed layers of the air battle. The induction of a platform similar to the Kizilelma would also allow Pakistan to restructure its air defense doctrine. Instead of depending mainly on manned fighters for long-range interception, Pakistan could position unmanned aircraft along critical sectors. These aircraft would patrol independently for extended periods without fatigue, without concerns about cockpit workload, and without the limitations that restrict manned aircraft during long missions. Their radars could operate at optimized frequencies tailored to specific threats. Their missile loadouts could be customized for either long-range interception or medium-range disruption. Their data links could pass continuous streams of high-detail information back to command nodes or to manned fighters acting as decision centers rather than frontline shooters. The introduction of an unmanned interceptor equipped with indigenous long-range weapons would also strengthen Pakistan's ability to maintain air coverage during moments when its manned aircraft must refuel or reposition. An unmanned aircraft does not need the same degree of logistical support once airborne. It can remain on station until fuel becomes its only constraint. It does not require complex life support systems. Its internal architecture can be optimized entirely for sensors, computing, 
electronic warfare suites, and missile carriage. Pakistan recognizes that such efficiency directly translates to cost savings and allows for a larger number of persistent platforms operating simultaneously across different sectors of the airspace. If Pakistan adopts a similar aircraft, the process of integrating the FAS missile will require careful refinement of its seeker logic, propulsion characteristics, and mid-course guidance behavior. Long-range air combat does not depend solely on the power of the missile. It depends on how accurately the launch platform can provide updated target information during the initial and middle stages of flight. This requires a radar that operates with stable frequency control, high-gain antennas, and the ability to differentiate genuine targets from clutter, flares, and interference generated by opposing aircraft. With the progress Pakistan has made in the design of modern radar systems for its fighter programs, there is a strong foundation to build an unmanned launch platform that meets all these technical requirements. The integration of an indigenous missile on an unmanned platform also creates a new industrial dynamic. It pushes Pakistan to design fire control computers that can adjust missile flight paths in real time without requiring pilot inputs. It demands that algorithms read sensor data with precision and predict target motion based on patterns that constantly change. It requires advanced power distribution systems capable of supporting high-energy radar modes and electronic protection suits simultaneously. These challenges collectively refine Pakistan's overall aerospace industry by forcing deeper coordination between radar engineers, missile designers, aeronautical specialists, and software developers. The success of the Turkish test may also inspire Pakistan to explore swarm coordination where unmanned aircraft share sensor data among themselves. A group of unmanned interceptors, each carrying long-range air-to-air missiles, could create overlapping detection networks. Such networks would limit the ability of hostile aircraft to use low-altitude approaches, stealth shaping, or terrain masking. Pakistan could pair one unmanned aircraft focused on radar scanning with another optimized for missile carriage. The combination would reduce the burden on individual platforms and allow for specialized roles that increase the overall effectiveness of the force. The idea of deploying an unmanned platform capable of launching FAS missiles also enhances Pakistan's deterrence posture. Any adversary planning deep air incursions would have to calculate against the presence of silent aircraft that may be operating without the predictable patterns of manned fighters. These platforms could approach from unexpected angles, remain airborne for long hours, and execute missile launches at distances that force hostile aircraft to remain well outside their preferred engagement envelopes. This would give Pakistan more time to mobilize ground-based air defense and manned fighter formations. Pakistan understands that air warfare is shifting toward distributed networks rather than centralized assets. The future will favor forces that can generate many nodes of detection and firing capability rather than relying on a few expensive assets. An unmanned aircraft carrying long-range missiles fit neatly into this evolving structure. It allows Pakistan to multiply its reach without multiplying operational costs. It supports the principle of layered defense where every altitude band is covered by a mix of sensors and weapons. The Turkish demonstration is therefore significant for Pakistan not only because it shows what is technically possible, but because it reinforces Pakistan's long-term ambition to achieve full control over the critical elements of its aerial combat system. Pakistan sees its own future built upon the fusion of indigenous radar development, indigenous missile design, and platform autonomy. The prospect of an unmanned aircraft firing the FAS missile family is no longer distant. It is now a foreseeable step in Pakistan's pursuit of a self-reliant and resilient air combat capability that adapts to the changing nature of warfare with confidence and clarity. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for upcoming videos.